But I included this together because you can't really do the second part without doing the first. So the first part is about calculating molality. And molality is defined as the moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. So this is a little different from molarity in that one, it's no longer liters, it's kilograms, which a lot of times is similar because for water, one kilogram is a liter. But it's no longer talking about the entire solution, it's just the solvent. So in other words, this is taking the one substance, dividing it by the other substance, whereas with molarity, it's the substance divided over the entire thing. So that's a little nitpicky, but it's a, it's a good distinction to make. So our solute is AlCl3. It's our solute because it's the one with less substance, typically. And water is usually your solvent. So we're going to convert that into moles. So one mole, I'm going to add up the mass of AlCl3. So I get 133.33 grams. So that is going to be 0.06 moles of AlCl3. And then I need to know how many kilograms of solvent. So there's 200 grams of water. And for every 1,000 grams, there's one kilogram. So that's 0 0.2 kilograms of water. So my molality now is simply going to be 0 0.06 moles divided by 0 0.2 kilograms. When I do, do that math out, I'm going to get 0 0.3 moles per kilogram, or more commonly, 0 0.3 molal, sort of an italicized M, that's how we express it. So the answer to number one is this is a concentration of 0.3 molal. All right, so we've got our answer to one. Now let's use it to find our answer to the second part. We want to first find the freezing point of this solution. So we're going to use the equation delta Tf equals I times Kf times the molality. I is the Van Toff factor. And we calculate the Van Hoff factor by looking at our solute. In this case, it's AlCl3. So I ask myself, what is AlCl3 made out of? If it is molecular, it will only dissolve. It won't break apart. So I would be 1. But this is ionic. It's going to break into Al3 plus and 3 Cl minuses. So this is 4 particles. So I is going to equal 4. The Kf is something I look up. It is a constant. For water, the value of Kf is 1.86 Celsius degrees per molal. So that means that the more concentrated the solution, the more the freezing point is going to change. Actually, usually it's negative 1.86 to demonstrate that the uh, freezing point will drop. So I'm going to just go ahead and make this calculation. The freezing point change is going to be 4 times negative 1.86 Celsius degrees per molal times 0.3 molal. So 4 times negative 1.86 times 0.3, and that represents a change of negative 2.2, I'm going to round Celsius degrees. So that's the change in the freezing point. Now the freezing point is normally 0 degrees for water, so that means the new freezing point will be negative 2.2 below that, which, of course, again, is just negative 2.2. So that is the freezing point of the water. Now, the boiling point, same, pretty much the same formula. Delta Tb equals I times Kb times M. I is, once again, just going to be 4. Kb for water, I look up, is 0 0.51 Celsius degrees per molal. And the concentration is going to be 0.3. So I do 4 times 0.51 times 0.3. And I'm going to get about 0.61 Celsius degrees. That's the change in the boiling point. Water normally boils at 100, so it's going to increase by 0.61. I'll probably just round this significant figure-wise, I mean technically, maybe 100.6 degrees Celsius. So that is the new boiling point. So remember, the boiling point increases when you have things dissolved in it, and the, the freezing point drops when you have things dissolved in it. 